the day is going to be a good day for all of us. Um, a lot of cool things happening. I'll bring you guys up to speed with. And while we're doing this, I'll just go ahead and get going. I am Dave Lowe. I'm the CEO of ISI Federal. We want to help make federal contracting manageable, profitable, and consistent. That's our job. You may recognize us from isifederal.com. You can check out all our stuff there. We help with representation, marketing, intelligence, and uh, bid management, the high-level stuff. We don't like to do the paperwork. And that's why Greg is here today. And we'll get to Greg in just a minute. Uh, the other thing we'll be talking about today is GovBrief. We make you the expert. We get out there and get the initiatives. We interview you and we drive buyers to you so that you have follow-up meetings and build those relationships. Very important. Uh, GovContacts.us is the assembly of a lot of our information in kind of bite-sized forms that you can purchase there. You can get the top 250 of of any of your competitors, buyers, and there's special reports that land there for NVSBE. If you have a contract, a GSA contract, uh, you can get quickfuse.com is where you can go ahead, ahead and purchase and find out that you can get immediate notifications from GSA eBuy, which is an important thing, especially as you start to get into this the, the rest of this year. And with me, I have Jamie Zell. Jamie Zell, say hey. He is with GSALogic.net. And what do you do for a living, Jamie? Well, good morning, everyone. What we do is we help people get their GSA schedule, and then throughout the life cycle of their GSA schedule, we keep it current and correct and up to date through GSA schedule revisions. So uh, we would like to make sure that you're using that tool to the best of its ability, as it is a powerful purchasing vehicle. GSA buys billions every year on GSA, and it's an important thing to have if you're out there selling to the federal government, because if you don't have your GSA schedule, you automatically miss the business. You, so we'd like to be able to help folks get on GSA. And if you have a schedule, we'd certainly want to talk with you and make sure that you're keeping your schedule up to date and current. I, I couldn't agree more. It is an absolute necessity. I just, I'm, I'm doing research so that we can do a special, um, GSA e buy session because we're you know we get a lot of information from Quick Fuse, but there's some new regulations there that make e buy a very powerful tool, especially if you're driving that message to them. Does anybody know what the limit is for for GSA schedule size of a contract? That I do not know. You know, Greg. What's the maximum it could be? The maximum that you can do on e buy through with the GSA schedule. Do you know what the maximum size contract is? I thought it was determined in your when you do your final proposal revisions what you you set the limit of what you require what you agree to accept. That that would be true from from the setup standpoint. No limit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no. They limit. can write a hundred billion dollar contract if they want to through GSA eBuy. And we're going to be talking about that because you can actually as little as three companies can be notified. Crazy. It is very cool. Um, and you mentioned, this is great. Greg, I'm going to introduce you first and then we'll go back to why Raphael is not here, but go ahead. Tell us about you. Great. The guy that the mystery man that you've been hearing on the phone is Greg Clark. He's in the proposal writing, G does GSA schedule work and other contract vehicles. What does all that mean? Well, it means that uh, there's six of us that have been in business since 1995. Uh, our newest employee has been with us about 12 years, the new guy. <laughs> wow. So, and, and we help companies respond to government solicitations um, in pursuit of, uh, of government contracts. And in our Almost 24 years, we've helped our clients win 341 government contracts with a combined value that went over 1.6 billion last year. 1.6 billion, this billion, very mm -hmm. good. And and I love Greg because, and I love Jamie too. I love both of you guys because you like paperwork and I don't. So well, I mean, t today, including from Raphael, he said I got a client and they they want to bid on a contract. It's due in two weeks. Can you help? Yeah. The answer is yes. Senator? And another another client said, yeah, we just got on we just got on the schedule, and we need uh, we went into e buy and there's a solicitation there. Can you help? Yeah. Yep. We and don't need to have a year. We don't need to have a year head start on it. No, you don't. You don't have to. And that's why I love you because I do want a year head start as much as I can. 
<laughs> we'll talk about that in a few minutes. You got to stack the deck in your favor. That's, That's why. That's right. I, we're, we're the deck stackers. We're we're uh, we're we're the ones that are dealing and arranging the cards. So there you go. Um, the guy who's not here today, and I want to give a shout out to Rafael Marrero with Rafael Marrero and Company. He helps with socioeconomic certifications. Just wrote a book. Just released it. I was down in Miami with, with releasing. It. It's a it's a secret salsa of doing business with the government. And it is only available in um, it, it's only it's only uh, in Hispanic. It's it's all I couldn't understand half the half the things they were saying. Not even half. I was like two percent. I was one of two gringos in the place. So uh, anyway, I just want to give a shout out to Rafael. He's going in for uh, uh, he's got a virus, so he's going to the hospital for a, for a minor thing. I uh, hope and we wish him the best and pray for that his for his fast recovery because we do miss him here with the sexy blue glasses um and i'll be with him next week is peter timbis in the house that i did i see P peter show up well if peter comes in and even if he doesn't if you need contract funding that means you win a contract and you need to fund that bad boy and guess what if you win a contract and you're not sufficiently funded they may take that away from you so reach out to peter timbis with tfn Action Capital, they can help you fund those, especially they specialize in 8As uh, and do a great job with it. About this webinar, every second Tuesday at 11 a.m., we changed some things around specifically because GoToWebinar jacked us up and messed uh, their, uh, their, their registrations up. So anybody that's here is here brand new, which is awesome. We are glad that you guys are here. And we actually, there's a few that are here from today. I sent out the message so they could be here. But we get real about how things work here, give you dialogue with folks like Jamie and Greg and Raphael and, and other folks, uh, we talk about winning strategies and tactics, and we show some we show ourselves off a little bit because we want you to know that you have resources that you can reach out to, and they're capable to be able to help fill some of the gaps in your organization. We'll talk about the briefing controls in just a minute because this is going to be a two-way dialogue for today. We're going to talk about the next 60 days. Really, really important information about the next 60 days. Some success stories, some of the biggest issues that you're facing. We want to hear it from you about your biggest issues, and we'll talk about some of the solutions to get to where you want to go. A quick disclaimer, this is not endorsed by any agency in the federal government like GSA or any of those guys. It's provided to you for informational purposes only. And if we do have anybody from the government, I don't know if we do. I'll have to see. I'll have to check that. But no matter what, if the people from government personnel show up, it's not an indication or endorsement of anybody here, you, me, or anybody else. It's not a commitment for them to buy from any vendor. So real quick, to, so if you want to make things work really well in this, um, in this webinar format, you can drag the bar. It may be on the bottom, maybe on the left, but you can drag the bar and you can make Jamie and I look bigger. You can make us disappear by doing just that. And if you open up the panel, there are handouts in the panel and we're going to be reviewing one of those handouts. So grab those handouts, print them out and have them ready or at least download them so that you have access to them. If you have any questions, you can chat them to us or you can raise your hand. And if that's that little doodah on the side that I didn't put an arrow to. But if you see that little arrow with the hand, that's that's how you can raise your hand. If you called in on the phone and you want a dialogue, we have to have your audio pin put in. And I'll go through that in a few minutes when we get to the questions and make sure everybody has their audio pin in. And if you don't, I'll send you a little message so that you can do that. So we do. we'd also have some polls. And the first quick poll is how long does it take to to get federal traction? Is it three to six months, six to 12 months, 12 to 18 months, 18 to 24 months, or 24 to 36 months? Come on now. It's all right. You can do it. I need to move some stuff around. I can't see. There we go. Now I can see. All. So most everybody is thinking at least close to right. I will say that. <clears throat> We did this study years ago, and even today, we talk to people, <clears throat> not what you want it to be, by the way. <laughs> it's not what you want it to be, is what it is. So with that, we're getting another five, four, three, two, one. You can do it. You can do it. All right. This is what we got, guys. Three to six months, if you're extremely lucky. Six to 12 months, 
if you're very lucky. 12 to 18 months if you're lucky. And the answer is 18 to 24 months. And depending on what you have as your setup will determine that. Right, Jamie? That's exactly right. You can't just walk in and say, hey, I'm here. I talked to, I literally talked to somebody yesterday who said, well, I'm, I'm registered in Santa, got my cage code. That is fantastic. But that is not going to get your, that's not going to pay your bills. I can tell you that. So I'm glad everybody's here. And we already did the disclaimer. We already did, what is happening with my, my system? My system is going backwards. All right. So we already did that. And the reason why we're here is there's $410 billion that's going to be spent in the next 203 days. The the reason, why is that, uh, Greg, why why are we talking about 203 days right now? You there? Greg? Greg? Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, you muted yourself. That's how much time is left in the fiscal year. And fiscal year ends when? September 30. What time? Midnight. Midnight, uh, midnight Hawaiian time. <laughs> That's I've seen stuff coming. I haven't seen, I've heard uh, from clients that told me that they did stuff on Hawaiian time. So that is exactly why we're, we're doing what we're doing. Uh, because guess what? If we're not doing our job right now, 203 days going to pass. And the reason why it takes 18 to 20 now, 18 months is probably as close. It's as close to 18 months as you're going to get because we're, we're just about to tick over into Q3 of 2019. And as a result of that, we have the ability to have two Septembers in the next 18 and a half or so months. So if you give yourself 18 months, your chances right now of being successful are going to be very, very good. So, uh, let first of all, let me know why you guys are here. I want this is the next poll that we have, and then we're going to get to some success stories. So you're going to need to to pay attention because we're going to open this up for for success stories. And I had somebody that I really wanted to be here for the success stories. Hold on a second. I want to make sure I can do this. I don't know if I can do this while we're in a session or not, but I'm going to try. So, I guess it's great. Nobody picked a some nut sent an email. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that. Okay, we're closing that poll. Here's what we got. So, so, I've got a lot of new people in the federal space. That's good news. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for being here. And that a lot of folks, uh, I mean, if everybody is not selecting, but you need to find buyers. Uh, that's beautiful because we have an answer for that, and we have the answer for marketing. So between those two, we got we're, we're good. And and I cannot believe nobody took the some nut. It's the first time that's never happened. So let's talk about some of the success stories. Greg, you got some success stories. Let's talk about you first. What do you got out there? I'm going to see if I can get Zoe Zoe up here and see if she can. Because I talked to her the other day. She said she was going to pop in here. I'm hoping she's here. Go ahead and and, and lead us off into what you have as far as success stories so far. Well, uh, 24 years is a lot. That's a lot to to dig into. We had um, we had, took a company in Anchorage, Alaska, that was doing um, a few hundred thousand a year, and and uh, we've helped them win. I believe it's 26 five-year contracts. Wow. Um, primarily doing there's there's I think one or two food service, a couple of little janitorial, but primarily they are shell stocking contracts with the defense commissary agency um, performing it at um, on installations around the country from key west to alaska to hawaii to uh east coast uh, all over so um we've had we are, we've we've won 47 of these deca shelf stocking contracts and the majority were with this company but we've also helped you know we um they're set aside or a variety of set asides with that agency and we reached a point where, uh, you know, when you're when you're having that much success with one agency, you have a lot of repeat business, as you might suspect. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of our 8A clients that we had bid with had graduated, so I have to go and find a new 8A client. It's nice to go and say, I need I need somebody to bid on these contracts. We've won quite a few with. 
So we found a company that had no experience in the industry, and DECA is an agency that allows you to, to, to move into that industry. You don't have to show specific experience doing exactly what they're calling for. They just want to see what you've done and that you've made your customer happy with whatever it was. How you show that you understand and can perform this successfully is by your, your, uh, your staffing plan. Where are you going to put your hours to perform all these services, which is where we come in. And you already so, know all that because you've done bid on it over and over and over, over again, and over and over. So that's so we, we've 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 uh, we've pursued four contracts with this company and they've won all four. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. I do have Zoe. You there? I saw you come in. Thank goodness. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hey, thank you for joining me. Zoe, t introduce yourself. You're with Abrams C Consulting, right? Yes. Hi everyone, my name is Zoe Fender. I work with Abrahams Consulting. I'm a technology consultant. And yeah, I'm excited to be here. Awesome, so what does Abrahams do? Obviously, te technology consultant, what does that mean? Okay, so we specialize in the vast majority of IT products, services, peripherals. Our main areas of focus include storage, networking, security, and um, also managed services. And then we're also like hardware, software resellers too. And the owner of Abrahams is who? Angela Gibson. Angela Gibson. And we had Angela on, this is probably what, a year and a half ago or a year ago, at least a year. And, and Angela is just fired up. She's always fired up. And she's got fired up people <laughs> like Zoe working for her. It's awesome because they come in on Monday round tables. Always love to have you there, by the way. Love it, love it, love it. And, uh, and the new... And you have somebody new there too. What's her, what's her name? Oh, Edrelin. Edrelin. Yeah. yeah that, I always want to say Evelyn, but it's Edrelin. So, yeah. so that's awesome. We want to give a shout out to Abraham's Consulting. If anybody wants to team or partner you and wants to have somebody that is always fired up, Angela's always fired oh. up and it's awesome. So tell us, tell us what happened with you over the past couple of weeks, because this is a great success story. Okay. Um, so as for usual, I do my cold calling to both buyers and keep cold calling. Does, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Cold calling doesn't work, Zoe. It totally does work. <laughs> <laughs> it works for sure. Yeah. That's right. So it's cold calling buyers. Um, just how did you get those buyers? Person. I wonder. Just real quick. How did you get those buyers? <laughs> we bought a list from you guys. <laughs> yes. Just. just um, so I was just calling to see what sort of what they had coming down the pike. Um, and I got some information about a software that a particular agency was purchasing, asset management software, IT asset management. Uh -huh. um, so naturally, they don't really share too much, but they just said this is what um, they're working on. And so I did the research um, on the company and I didn't get it registered, but we got special pricing. So even though we didn't get it registered, so there's like tiers, right? You get the deal registration, which is like the best pricing and then special pricing, which is kind of like a tier below. Um, but even though we didn't get it registered, we ended up winning the deal. And it was just crazy. All that from a cold call, really. So And he didn't even give that much information. We just kind of did the work to make sure we were positioned correctly. So there's so much wrapped in that, Zoe. It is fan-freaking-tastic. Congratulations. Um, yeah. and we're, our instruction is always no messages because you don't leave messages, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're out in front of those folks and you want to make sure that you're building those relationships. We're going to be talking about that in just a minute, a little yeah. bit more. So, and what, as I, if I can just mention last time I told you that I had called this, um, contracting officer like months before, and I was like, so scared to talk to him. And like I said, he could probably tell that because the first conversation was literally like two seconds. He was like, I don't have anything. <laughs> and I was like, okay. But you know, the next time I was more confident and it worked in my favor. So. And Very confidence, exciting. confidence comes across the phone like that. And there's, there's so much that's baked into your success there. The fact that you still made the phone, you got to freaking pick up the phone. First thing is, you gotta you gotta know who you're gonna call, right? So you put, you know who you're calling, you know what you want to say, you want you have your your clothes, what, what you're asking for, you have your ask. Make sure you make the call and make the ask. 
And guess what you had to lose? What did you have to lose if they said no? Nothing. Nothing. Zero. <laughs> they don't, they don't, they're not spending any money with you. They're not, mm -hmm. they don't buy your lunch. They don't pay your paycheck. They don't. They, they, right. Well now, well, now you got something to lose. But it's yeah. a project now. But instead, you have things to build on because you can go back to that that contracting office mm -hmm. and say, hey, we did this right. Give us another shot. Give us another shot. Let, yeah. me, let us knock and your shots also, off. We also got a bunch of leads um, just through that through that win alone. So it really is like a ripple effect. Yeah. Really. Rip that's the right kind of ripple effect. And I, and that's, I'm, thank you for being here. It's awesome. And you can throw in at any time. And I'm going to just build on, a, on what you just said real quick is one of the successes that we've had is we're up to 70,000 contracting officers and contracting specialist connections that we have in the federal government. Now, not all of those are doing IT stuff with, that Zoe's interested in. They're doing facilities. They're, they're building planes or buying planes. They're, they have uh, mechanical issues or they, they're buying pencils and pens or toner cartridges. It doesn't matter. They buy everything, right? So the other part that we have, which I'm super excited about, is we have 500,000 new contacts and connections that are program managers, directors, SESs, senior executive services people. We can now figure out where they are in the food chain by their, by their pay grade. We have their titles and we have their email addresses. And we can go out after these folks. We're including those into, in fact, we're looking for, if you guys fill this one of these roles, I want to talk with you later. We're looking for professional services that sell things that for professional services for employees. That means training for them, either personal, they could be personal training, but not like, you know, pumping weights, that kind of stuff. We're talking about what would help them in their job. Employee services, HR issues, retirement. These are the things that they're buying on a regular basis. If you provide these, we are assembling a special program with GovBrief to get the message out there to drive business. Uh, through through that. So, uh, Jamie, what do you got as far as as a success story for for uh, GSA Logic? What do you got cooking? Well, one recent one comes to mind. We uh, several years ago we got a client. Her engineering schedule, G, uh, uh, PEZ, it's a professional engineering services, Absolutely. and she is a was a small woman owned business. She's grown it successfully over the years. To the point that as they as they picked up other services, she has recently incorporated a second company specifically for government services, and we're getting ready to do their schedule. Actually, get them on with their second GSA schedule. So she took and and carefully built this thing, and she says it's a system that works. You just have to be persistent. You have to work it. You have to keep getting out there, and she really started to get traction. And rather than she has really built a label and a name on. The, the company that she's currently running and doesn't want to clutter it, if you will, which is why she's now incorporated and built a second company, exactly, get a second schedule, go after other additional professional services, and, and now has a two-prong appro approach going into the federal government, and the government is her, her best customer by, by no means, and she's built it all from the ground up. That's a beautiful thing. And um, when you start talking about there's multiple prongs and the ability to, to resonate with somebody else, to have a, a specialized area. Specialized areas are great. If you say you do IT, we do everything IT, freaking possible. You can't. And they know you can't. And then you say, well, we do, we do IT, we do IT, we do staffing, and we do facilities management. That's like, the, you're, you don't, they, they want somebody at least to start, to your point, Zoe, and I'm going to bring you up again, Zoe. Here, here you have something that was very specific that then can grow outside of that spe specificity, right? You, But get in there with something specific. Become known for something. And now you're doing your marketing, going out after everybody that's doing – what is the – what is it It's that you won that in, Zoe? I – uh the software yeah. it asset manager it asset manager i don't know why i can't remember that you told me that like six i know times in the <laughs> so anyway my short-term memory is not what it should be uh anyway so how how much is that relationship worth so far that one contracting officer just one how much so far zoe what do you mean like how much was that contract for 
Oh, uh, what was it? 97, $97,000. $97, $97,000. That's one contract. Now, mm -hmm. your assumption is now that that's spread out into others and you still have this relationship with the contracting officer that you have, what, my question is, and you can answer this too, um, what is one... Mm. Wait a minute. Where is it? Where is my... What is one federal relationship worth? Uh, that's not the right question. But let's do it this way. I forgot. I thought I relabeled this. This is the really the question. Don't read the question at the top. The question is, what is one relationship worth? Not how much capital does it take? Oh, what is, that's the question I was seeing. The first question. What what is one what is one relationship worth? So don't read the top. Is it 10 to 25,000, 25 to 50, 50 to 100, 150 to 150? Or is it more than $150,000 for one relationship? You already told me that your, for yours, that relationship's worth at least 100 grand, right? But it's probably mm -hmm. more, worth more than that, right? Right. So with that, we're going to leave this open. This is a beautiful thing because this is going to drive what we're going to be doing in the next 60 days for certain. Love it, love it. Come on. Everybody vote. Vote as quick as you can so we can move on. It's like getting seated at Southwest. That way everybody can, we can push the plane away. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, and boom. All right. So here's the answer. Not to that question. <laughs> the answer is, is, so for most people, it's more than $150,000, right? And I would say that almost in every instance, it's going to be worth more than $150,000. It could be a little bit less if you're doing micro purchases and micro sales, right? So the, the next 60 days, what do what is it that's in your way of getting wins in the next 60 days? I'm going to talk a little bit about procurement readiness. This is usually what Raphael is going to handle. If you're not ready, if your materials aren't ready, if you don't look like you deserve to be in the federal space, they're going to sniff you out and they're going to throw you out of the pool. Am I right, Jamie? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you think about the things that are necessary for being ready, it's making sure that your SAM record, these are just basics, making sure your SAM record is active. You wouldn't believe how many people's SAM records aren't active. And then secondarily, make sure that they're correct. Make sure that you have the right NAICS code. I would be very careful to make sure your primary NAICS code lines up with what's happening in your tax returns. That's that's number one. That's what Raphael always says. And the other piece that you really want to make sure is that you have NAICS code so that they, if they are looking they and they look at your capability statement, everything lines up the way it's supposed to. And making sure you do have a capability statement because that's what companies need in order. It's, their, it's your company resume. Making sure that you have that up to date, having having the the relevant information for your contract, your contact information. I actually saw uh, even today I saw a capability statement that didn't have a primary contact on it. Who are you supposed to call if 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 they want to do if they want to do business with you? Making it easy for them to be able to figure out what you do and how you do it. Your bullet points. I like to keep things in bullet points. I like them to be editable so that I can change them and say, oh, if they're if they're really important. Watch this, Zoe. You're going to be proud of me. If they're really concerned about asset management, <laughs> put that at the top. Or if that's something that's really important, so if that's what you're driving, asset management, bingo. Then you can do storage like you I remember that too hey I'm I'm on a roll so storage and then IT uh services that you can plug into that and what those things mean but when you're taught when you're getting to somebody they are going to start peeling back the onion and um and uh, as uh as Malcolm Gladwell talks about in blink thin slicing whether or not you deserve to be in the conversation and either you're going to sell them that you deserve to be in the conversation or they're going to sell you that you don't. One of you is going to get sold. And it could be in those two seconds, like you had the first call, Zoe, I don't got nothing. Click. And then they sold you 
on that one. But you turned around months later and you sold them. That's exactly what has to happen. You have to. Hallelujah. There, there you go, baby. So, um, so that with that, so uh, what are some of the things, uh, Jamie Zell? What are some of the things that you see that are necessary for you to be in the for to be ready for what companies need? For GSA schedule, what is some of the most important things for the next 60 days? What, what's most important? For the next 60 days? Well, first of all, if you don't have a GSA schedule, there, there's not a lot of time, but there's a possibility to be able to get something built off to GSA and through the system, especially for some of the IT services that we see come through yep. because they have a fast lane option there, which is unique to that particular one schedule. And the potential exists to be able to actually get your schedule built into the system and awarded to be able to use it this September. And if it's there earlier, obviously they're ramping up their purchasing in August, but uh, from a timing perspective, you know, we, we always talk about long-term timing and looking into the next two years and, and not, never immediate results, but the, the, the sheer factor is in, in September, they're gonna be buying like crazy. It's gonna be a waterfall of purchasing and you can take advantage of that. If you don't have your GSA schedule, the best thing to do is to get it started because the sooner we start it, the sooner we can get you to the other side. And if you do have your GSA schedule, you really should go over that thing with a fine tooth comb and be looking at every component about it. The dates, the last updates that you've had, what your pricing is, have you taken advantage of economic price adjustments? These types of things are all to the success component of your GSA schedule that's gonna be front row seats when we come into August and September. Got that and, right. and if you don't have your stuff current and correct, we're the company to get you there. We've been at it over 15 years. And on new, the new schedules, we guarantee the award. We've never missed. And on the revisions, that's a shoe in because it's already a pre-awarded schedule. So yep. it's important to, to keep that schedule current and correct and as profitable as possible. Yep. And again, if you don't have your schedule, let's get it going. Yep. And one big thing, I, I will absolutely back you up on the fact that that information has to be current. Because if it's not current, you can actually win a contract and lose money. Absolutely. We'll absolutely. And they don't want to, it's like you don't want to say no once you win, but you just realize that you're actually in the red. Uh, so that's really important as well. You know, what, yeah, one other quick thing too, Cut. just what we see it happen all the time. People are out there looking for federal business and they're, and they're moving around and navigating and they find an opportunity and guess what? It's GSA and they're not GSA enabled. And all of a sudden they need it yesterday and it doesn't happen that quick. So if you're, if you're in it to win it and you don't have your GSA schedule, opportunities are going to come up. And if you don't have your schedule, you miss the business. So you want to make sure and get your schedule. So that's another purchasing tool, as well as a credential that you, you can use to win your the, the, the most federal business that you can. I agree with you. And how about you, uh, Mr. Clark? What What's your thought on, uh, on what companies need for <coughs> proposal planning? For proposal planning, uh, the best thing to do is get all your past performance in order because that's going to all, almost always be be required. And that's also going to tell you what opportunities you can pursue. So as far as, as, far as what you can do for yourself to prep, um, that's one thing. And, and uh, if I can segue into Oasis on that, as far as what to prep, because we're still waiting on, those, on the 8A solicitation, which will be followed by the unrestricted and small business on-ramping. Um, which is an Oasis is a, a contract vehicle I've been in, uh, tracking and involved with since 2012. Um, there is a self-scoring worksheet that uh, GSA has included with it that you have to complete and and include with your uh, with your proposal. Do that now. Use the old one and do it now. That'll tell you whether you need to spend another second thinking about it. <laughs> because if you don't have what it takes, then move on and find something else. And it was a cluster when that thing came out first in 2012 yeah it still is <laughs> the, re uh, I'll, uh, the reason it's it's not out yet and i'll read the uh the quote as a result of gao solicitation protests gsa is reviewing the gao recommendations impacting the subject on ramping solicitation and we expect to have uh next steps posted in late march so that solicitation they've they've been trying to get it out for a long time and we're already a month and a half past when it was supposed to be issued, and and it's it's in protest. Yeah, it, and the on ramping process is specifically designed to minimize the protests. Of course. And 
they still can't get it right. We're going to leave that there, the man. I'm not gonna... I spoke to the industry relations manager, and um, maybe it's uh, her rosy disposition, but she's optimistic um, about it. And she did say she knows who we are. She knows what we do. She said, tell all of your 8A clients who are in these industries that, and, and have these NICS codes that are included in these pools that we need 8As very badly. The, the, the federal customers who are utilizing OASIS need 8As badly because whoever was 8A when they applied in 2012 have probably graduated. So there's a dearth of 8As in OASIS and they need to, to reload that segment of contractors. And that's that's really, you're, you're spot on. And I'm glad that you're doing it because that one is a that is a headache and a half. So if you guys are interested in Oasis, call Greg. And let them know what is Oasis. Tell them what it is. It's a it's a contract vehicle. Um, it's 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 narrower than the GSA schedule, and that it doesn't have thirty some odd different industry groupings. It's primarily engineering and environmental. There's some uh, some marketing. Um, Human resources, uh, public relations, advertising, those kinds of aims, sins, if you're familiar with the schedule, some direct mailing, um, accounting, some fabs, sins, financial business solutions. Um, it's a variety, but not as broad as GSA schedule. So um, no direct IT, which a lot of people assume because there's so many IT contract vehicles. So yeah. it's not IT, more so um, financial business, advertising, integrated marketing, engineering, environmental, things of that nature. Cool. And they're typically uh, going to be five years. Um, I can and they're pushing. The, the, they're pushing. Yeah, they're pushing. Yeah, they're they're uh, pushing for, they, for mandatory usage of, of Oasis for those types of contracts, um, the same way they did with FSSI. Um, they just didn't have the – they didn't have the depth and breadth, I think, that was necessary for the first round. But um, – yeah, if you're interested in that, they, that and they, they need new they need new life. That's you know it's been six seven years since they since anybody was able to get on. Yeah. So that's why they're opening it up to small businesses and unrestricted and eight days. So it's going to be a um, a busy year for us as far as that's right. concerned. Beautiful. So I'm going to go back to that that question that we asked. What what one federal relationship is worth? In most instances, over one hundred fifty thousand dollars, but for one relationship. So, and. Within that, I'm going to talk about the next 60 days because we're there's things that you can do to prep for it, like like the information that I was sharing on the pro procurement readiness components, on whether or not you have a GSA schedule, making sure your GSA schedule is ramped up and ready to go, and that your past performance is all happening. You should be doing that in the next 60 days period. All those things need to be running in tandem. Is there any reason they shouldn't be running in, in tandem, Greg? Nope. Nope. How about you, Jamie? Nope, no reason at all. No, all these things need to be moving at the same time, which is why when you're looking at what you're doing in the next 60 days, let me tell you what you're up against and why the next 60 days are, are critical. We just we just had the, the president release the 20 and 20, uh, 2020 budgeting, right? For the budgeting, the allocation of funds are going to be allocated. They're starting to say, we're going to work on these projects and they have more to spend than ever and they have less resources because they haven't been hiring, which means less time for them to turn things around, which means, oh, and by the way, we are dealing with something as a, as a group, we're two months behind because of the shutdown. And if you think what happens in September spending, September, it spikes up, then this is what happened last year, right? It spiked up October, November, December, ooh, comes right back down. And it's almost all continuing spending, almost all. There's some little nuances and things that need to get spent on. But besides that, most of everything went dark. And then usually they're they're working a little bit of stuff. But then you have the holidays at the end of, of December, which is two weeks of pretty much nothingness between vacations and all the rest of the stuff, right? Then, bam, we're in a shutdown for over 30 days. That's a month and a half. And then they have to ramp up to get things back on. So now we're dealing with a two-month window of non-production. Non-production. So we are two months. We're, 
we have the rest of the stuff that doesn't happen in October, November, December, pile on top of that two months. And now we're, this is where we are. We are now getting to a place where they're starting to churn these things around. And I'll say this, that if we don't get in front of decision makers in the next 60 days, before the requirement is spec, and this is where we're talking about being the dealer with the cards, we want to help them understand what that spec looks like so that it's geared more towards us. Does this happen in the world, Greg Clark? Say that one more time. Do, do people get ahead of the RFP and get their information in the specifications? Only if they're dealing with you. <laughs> I get More the people than, that uh, I get the people that wait until it's two weeks before it's due, and then just, can we dig into saying, this? But you're reading the RFPs as they come out, and you're and you can see whether or not the person that's bid on it in the past, for God's sakes, you're doing it with your eight A's with Deca. You know what Deca needs, right? And a lot of that information gets gets sewn in by the incumbent that makes it very difficult to compete. If the if the if the agency is happy with them. If the agency's happy with them, there's the key. If the agency's happy with them, it's going to get, the requirement is getting um, influenced. That's the word. So if the, if the, so if the agency's happy with the incumbent and the solicitation is Look. indicative of that, and we see that, you know, the submittal requirements are very uh, exclusive and the incumbent certainly has this, but maybe not too many other people do, then that's going to, and the better you get it, uh, Picking that up, that's going to help you in your bid, no bid decision. And, and it's that's a no bid decision. It's as bad right. as you want it, it's a no bid decision. And conversely, if, it, if it's opened up and it says, you know what, whatever you got, we want to encourage funding. Well, okay, well, they're probably not happy with the incumbent. This might be a good place to fish. Exactly. And get in, if you you can determine that even before the thing hits the street. And if you're, if you're a late thinker, you want to talk to Greg. If you want to get in this beforehand and start specking these and building the relationships, that's where you want to talk to me. And here's the reason why the next 60 days are the most important. March through May are the best months to be able to be doing this. They they have they do have a little bit of money. There's a little bit of spike going on because of what happened that didn't get done in last September. They got their money. They, they have things that they wanted to accomplish. So there's a spike that's happening right now. Too late for that. But the real spike is happening in September. And those are the best months to be able to get in front of these folks because in June we lose 20% of them from vacations. You're getting into the summertime. You're losing folks in vacations and their workload. July, 40% we lose with vacations and their workload starts to shift because they're looking at both the budgeting for 2020 and being able to allocate things for this year. August, 70% of them are gone because they're already starting to churn those requirements out. And even though they may not be due until the middle of September, they're already coming out and they're already getting finalized. September, forget about it. You're not talking to anybody about anything new in September. Unless it's a super crisis that they can't solve some other way. They're going to go right to the people that they already know and they're going to buy from them. That's the way that it's going to work. And the, the time cycle for what is 30 days turns into 15, 15 turns to seven, seven turns to three, three turns to two and one day. You'll see turnarounds for one day, 24 hours. We had a situation a few years ago where it came out on a Sunday at 11 a.m. was doing Monday at 11 a.m. September 29th. It ain't coming back out, baby. It's going to be it's going to be awarded. So we had a situation where, and that, and that was a $250,000 opportunity, just saying. So in order to do this, there's a, there's a sheet that you can download. It's, it's one of the handouts that's there. It's called the Winnable Opportunity Matrix. We're going to be talking about that. In order for this to work, in order for you to get there, you have to adjust your mindset. And I'm not saying that you don't want to go after opportunities, but it's bid, no bid when you're on after opportunities at that point. Right, Greg? Absolutely. What you want to know is bid, no bid. That's what, if you're talking about just looking at an opportunity when it lands, bid, no bid is your only equation. Where in this instance, we're going to talk about the people because the people behind the opportunities are the ones that we want to get to. And we know that opportunities come from people and people, you, me, everybody else on the planet buy from people they like. I don't care what anybody says. They're definitely not going to buy from people they don't like. And they're not going to buy even from incumbents that they don't like that aren't delivering. They have buying patterns. And they have preferences. We all do. We profile every day. 
I profile, you profile, everybody profiles, and we have preferences on how we buy. And if we are missing any of these, we're going to miss out on that because guess what? Winnable opportunities come from people who like us. So our objective, getting to the winnable opportunity matrix, you can download this and use it. The objective is to get there early, know before you want to get yourself into the green. I'm going to walk through a couple of these so that you can see them, but essentially knowing 60 days in advance, always a good thing because you can be kind of, Hey, did you think about this? And the program people, you can still talk, you can, you can talk to program people. Before the solicitation hits, you can talk to program people. After the solicitation hits, who can you talk to? Greg Clark. Just the contract specialist. Just the contracting officer or specialist. That's it. You talk to anybody else and you could be in big trouble, right? Well, nobody's like, going to talk to you. What's that? Nobody else is going to talk to you. Nobody else is going to talk to you. And if you try to talk to them, you could be, in, you could be, you could be excluded if you just try to talk to them. So what we're looking to do, we're looking to know ahead of time, we're looking to influence that scope of work, and we want to get to the people that are responsible. There are four folks that you need to know about. Not all of these are always involved in decisions. The larger they are, the more you have four, at least. And there's, there's people that work within the food chain of these folks. And I'll show you what they are. They have different roles, different needs, and different buying motives. Contracting officers are busy. They won't teach you how to do your work. They, they want to see that you're, and this is where your capabilities come into play. Make sure that you look like you belong. They don't like change, which means they don't want anything new. And if you're new, they don't want you. So you need to make sure that you come across as, hey, we're qualified. Give us a shot. And this is Abraham's Consulting drilled it drilled it with this. You're going to buy it from somebody. Give me a shot. That's what that's what the, the message is. They're experts in moving paper, which means that their job is to move that contract from one side of the desk to the other with an award. I'm not diminishing what they do because they select the purchasing mechanism, whether or not it's going full and open competition. It's going to go to 8A. It's going to, it's going to go get competed between two women-owned small businesses or serves disabled or hub zones or whatever. They're going to make the determination of what the purchasing mechanism is and who, what the pool of the people they're going to draw from. And they can go to as little as three GSA schedule holders and meet the FAR. They develop the contract requirements and they want the fastest way to purchase. And I'm talking fastest way to purchase. If you have a BPA that has headroom, they're going to use it. Easy is good. So our job, make it easy for them to buy from you and value them because they are very important and they do paperwork, which I hate doing. And I tell them when I say, I don't know how you handle all that paperwork because I would jump off a bridge and I don't have to. I don't have to like their world to really appreciate their world. And they're up against getting pulled in multiple directions. So what's easy? Clear, concise capabilities. Make sure your SAM registration is up to date because if they check it and you are not active, you are out of the pool. Preferred contract vehicle, if you have it, GSA schedule, soup, 8A stars, whatever they like to buy off of. And you can also give them pre-filled in standard form. Say, this is what it looks like if you filled out your standard form with our products already listed. So you can copy and paste if you want to. If not, just kick it to the curb. You would not believe how many people appreciate that. Why? Because you're helping them do their job, and that's easy. Who doesn't like to have their job done for them? So with the project managers and coordinators, we want to help them with requirements. We want to know what they do, know what they need, what their best practices are, and we want to give them these things. These are the best practices, innovative solutions, successes in similar situations. They're the guys that get the job done. We want to help them get the job done. Talk them up to their bosses. How many, If we come down from their boss and their top-down sales approach, we're already talking to their bosses. So we can say, hey, Sally's doing a great job. Even before we get awarded a contract, we start letting them know how valuable the people are that we're talking about. And then we have to finish strong. We don't want to be the incumbent that doesn't deliver ever. Because you don't deliver, you get a bad CPARS. What happens? What happens, Mr. Clark? 
You get a bad C for us. Find a new, find a new market. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. Stick a fork in yourself. You're done. So the technical representatives, these these, these people kind of bridge the gap between the contracting, the core. They're called cores, technical representative, COTARs. You'll hear different terms. They usually report to the PM. They're risk averse. They're lower in the food chain. You want to help them assist in their requirements. That's what they need. They need to know what the government standards are. Did you know that you can actually tell somebody what the government standards are, even if you're not in the government? Most of the gov brief times when we're talking about, we're talking about contract vehicles they don't even know exist. They've never used them before because they've been using the same contract for the past 30 years. They've been doing the same thing the same way and they may not like to change, which they don't. So we help them understand these things. So you want, they need help with the requirements and you want to help them look good. How do you help them look good? Government standards, identify similar purchases, certifications that would be beneficial to the administration, of this particular contract, if you're ISO certified and you have multiple ISO certifications, make sure that gets injected into the RFP. Why? Because that pushes your competitors right away. And you can use certifications in many ways, but you want to assist in the mandatory requirements and you want to get that information to them so that you help them look good. So the administrators, we're not going to spend a lot of time here. They are up at the top. And usually most of us are not playing there. The, the way to get to them is selling to their ego and ask them for political cover. If you were to win this and defense commissary agency and you're up against Greg, who's been there for 15 years, how are you going to win that thing? You need some political cover. If you want some of that, you need to ask for it. Say, hey, I'm going to need a little cover over here. Make sure that nobody's going to fight me on this and help them look good. And the biggest thing, keep them off CNN. They don't like being on CNN. When you see the VA on CNN, it's a bad day for them. So this is what we're after. People buy from people that like our job. Make them like us. Find them and make them like us. So first thing is finding those folks. So what are your biggest issues? Did we ask this one already? I don't think we did. Something's wrong with these polls. I don't know. Open it, open up your, uh, your side. I'm not even going to do the poll because it's not working right. So open up the side here and tell me what your biggest issues are. Um, I got a, a couple folks that have said that their issues are finding the people. So what are yours? Open it up and let me know if you are, if you called in on the phone, let's get you unmuted. And we'll, then we'll get you out of here for today. In just a minute. Let me get your, uh, see who's here. Al Ball's in the house. Al Ball, how you doing, man? How have you been? I'm doing pretty good. So what's Take your biggest care. issue, Al Ball? Mr. Mr. Facilities Man? Yeah. I guess getting in front of the um, purchasing people, the ones yeah. that buy. Yeah, getting in front of people. All right, we'll go there. I have, we, You know we have a solution for that because Al, Al's already bought stuff from us, so I love Al. And I love you because you still come to my Monday things on occasion. Yeah, I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah man. So cool. So, uh, how about you, uh, Diane? What, what what is your what what do you need? For, what's your biggest issue? Uh -oh. What you got, Diane? You there, Diane? I thought oh, I heard you. What did you ask? I didn't ask you anything. Uh, what's your biggest issue with getting in the doing getting federal sales? You there? Nope, I'm not. Uh, there. Okay. Um, Eddie Smith, you there, Eddie Smith? Uh, he doesn't have his. There he is. Eddie, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's your biggest issue getting getting federal contracts? Uh, I think I have an issue with getting in front of the right people, but also understanding um, understanding where to go, understanding how to compete in this, understanding how to how to be competitive. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, if the, the more you're in front of the right people, the more you understand what the level of competition is. How long you been doing what you're doing? About 20 years. 20 years. What do you do? I do project management. I do consulting. Um, I do con construction management. Excellent. Um, I, also, I also do some, some direct sales. <clears throat> so <clears throat> construction management, we actually have one of our best 
briefings, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. So getting in front of those folks. So you're no different. I mean, we're all in the same same boat. So I'm going to jump into something that I think would be beneficial for, for all of us to, to take a look at. And um, that is a 60-day plan that gets you in front of the right people, gets you subject matter expert status, and get you the follow-up meeting so that you can start these new relationships. The this is the methodology for being able one identify we'll, we'll identify the people, then we go out after those folks and we use GovBrief as a platform to get there. And in fact, we have many upcoming events, including I mentioned uh, letting people know about uh, of contracts, ESPC contracts. If you don't know what ESPC contracts, you're not alone. Because energy savings performance contracts are how they can take the savings from like LED lighting and apply the savings to buying a boiler or upgrading a roof or uh, getting new furniture or something like that. They can take the savings and place it someplace else. This is a relatively new contracting mechanism, at least in its in, in its current form. And we're talking about USDA PRISM. It's a system that they use and and charter transportation logistics. We're taking the message to the buyers and we're telling them, hey, this is what's important if you're if you're doing these kinds of things. And because we know over a million of these folks and where they are in the in the food chain, we can invite them to these. And then we also do industry briefings like getting your 8A or things like that. But we can reach out to both the primes and the direct federal people. So those are the things that we're doing. This is why the 60-day plan is so important, especially now, because if you wait, then it's too late and you start losing. It's still, We still do it in June, July, and August. Why? Because people ask us to. But to do it now as opposed to J- June, July, and August, you are absolutely increasing your effectiveness and your ability to potentially get something by the end of this fiscal year. Right, Jamie? Absolutely. If, if you're not running that, if you wait, if you wait to up, up to update your GSA schedule and your GSA contracting specialist is busy in July, it may take till August. And next thing you know, you, it's too late. Right? right. So there you have that. The other piece we call market essentials is the, the getting the information. So the other thing we do is we do introductory blitzes to the top two buyers in each location. And I'm talking about specific introductions. John, meet Angela. There's, there you go. That's, that's for, uh, that's for Abraham's. Uh, and thank, and then we respond for you to say, Hey, thanks, Dave. I appreciate that great introduction. And then you drive the face to face and phone meetings works every single time. And we book meetings. And this in conjunction with these two, we can do briefings and these. We do these regularly over the course of two months. It's two-month cycles. We do them all the time. This is what's important to be doing right now to get out in front of those folks so that by May, you already have some of those meetings. You're already having some of those conversations. And to your point, Eddie, you're already starting to understand what their processes are for actually doing the purchase. What do you need? Do you need a GSA schedule? Do you need some certification? Do you need a, a teaming partner? And in the instance with what Greg was talking about with Oasis, the next one coming out is 8A. Oh, man, I'd be partnering up with some 8A firms because you can win with the 8A as a sub to them, and then you can go out as a small business and win as a prime there. So you have two different things facing forward using Oasis as your contract vehicle if that's the vehicle that they're buying off of. If they're buying IT, that's not the vehicle. But if you're talking to them and you're asking them the questions, they will help you get that information. You'll do that, and you can use that with the Blitz. So we want we want to get you guys out of here, and I don't know if this is actually going to work or not. Let's see what this says. That's not right either. I got no idea why that didn't work. None of my polls are working. Let's see if this one works. That's not it either. I have. I need. I am. I got no idea. All right. Well, let us know what you need. Any other questions before we jump? Because I, I want to be uh, conscious. We're, we're already at the hour mark. So let me know if there's any other questions. Uh, will this proposal be 
I mean, presentation be ready, uh, available. Yes, we're, we'll have a copy of the presentation and the video so you can watch it over and over again. And yes, we can help you find the key decision makers. We have the best, the most complete and getting more complete every day information that's out there. Um, it is super exciting where we are. So we can help you with that. In fact, you, we can help you with the intelligence, the marketing, the representation, and even the oversight of the bid management. We, we shove all the rest of the stuff. The vehicle development goes to Jamie and the actual bid submission and creation goes to Greg because that's what they do best. And I don't do it best. <laughs> so, so there you have it. One thing we do well is quick fuse, quickfuse.com, Q-U-I-K-F-U-S-E. Dot com. If you have a GSA schedule and you're not using Quick Fuse, you are missing out. You're missing out on the speed and the ability to sift through things, lickety split, find the stuff that's really good for you, get special pricing, just like, just like Zoe did, getting it, knowing early, getting that special pricing, and uh, going after that. If you just need contacts, go to govcontacts.us. You can buy 250. You can get the whole full market essentials if you want there. But this is where you can get your contacts so that you can do, it's a do-it-yourself kind of package. Um, and we can certainly help with any of the advanced stuff that you need after that. You can find uh, ISI Federal on YouTube. You can you see a whole bunch of the briefings, especially, Eddie, we can talk about this later. You have, um, we have one of the best we did was construction management claims and disputes. You can find that by, by searching that. And uh, the next getting ahead of RFPs slash selling to the government is April 9th at 11 a.m. Jamie Zell, say goodbye to everybody and remind people what you can do for them. Folks, uh, appreciate you sitting in today. Whether you're GSA schedule specialists, certainly feel free to reach out. There's my email address. Uh, pick up the phone, give me a ring, very friendly guy. We'd love to help you out, get your schedule current and correct if you've got it already. And if you don't ha yet have a schedule, we can get you to the other side and make sure to turn it into a success using some of Dave's intelligence to propel that rocket ship once we build it for you. There you go. You, you give me give me the tools. I, you guys are the tool men. So give me the tools. Give me the amazing tools I can get, and, and we use them. And I'll just give a shout-out and, and best wishes to Rafael Marrero, who is, who is probably sedated right now. Um, so, uh, But he can help with the socioeconomic certifications. He gets his 100% track record in getting his 8A, getting 8A and Hub Zone uh, certified. So if you are eligible for those things, or if you think you might be or want to be eligible, this is the guy to talk to. Make sure you reach out to Raphael. And Greg Clark with DKA Associates is the man when it comes to the, that proposal writing. Tell us um, tell us a, a final goodbye. Uh, give me a call. We can discuss your experience and capabilities. And then once I have an understanding of that, see if we can find a, a solicitation that's a match for it. That's good. Love it. I appreciate you being here, Greg. Uh, Peter Timbus, uh, if you need contract funding, reach out to him. TFN at actioncapital.com is the best place to reach him. There's his phone number right there. And other than that, we'll see you next month. If you need me, you know where to reach me. DLO at isifederal.com and 202-568-6398 is my direct phone number, which is on do not disturb right this minute. <laughs> Thank goodness. So, uh, but after that, I appreciate it. Zoe. Thank you so much for being here and and uh, sharing your, your success stories. <clears throat> no problem. Anytime. You guys are awesome. Thanks much. And we will be in touch with everybody that needs us to be in touch with them. And we'll see you next month. Thanks, guys.